we are live. Good morning, friends. Welcome to Fellowship of Faith. I'm Tina Gadini. And I am not Justin. Not um, Justin. <laughs> my name is Matt Brown. Um, I'm a, one of the volunteers here at, uh, at uh, FOF. Matt does a lot of tech behind the scenes, and he is a master. Master Facebook <laughs> compiler. <laughs> I, you anyway. know, I think that should go on my resume. Master Facebook compiler. Master Facebook compiler. I am, I am a master of words. I'm a wordsmith. Okay. okay. <laughs> Happy Easter, Guys, everybody. When they asked me if I wanted to do this, I'm like, <laughs> I don't really do words well. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> You guys, we're glad that you're with us. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Is indeed. Last year, we did not have an Easter service live. Yeah, I remember I was part of the tech team then, and so it was like 10 people. Yeah. And all of you were online, and it, it was a very strange Easter service, well, so it's really great to have everybody being back. Being a pastor family, we're used to getting there before it's light out and then staying all the live long day and coming home exhausted. Dave came home last year, and he's like, I've got energy. What should we do? It was kind of crazy. <laughs> it's like an hour that we spent. Like, it wasn't this all-day affair. It was just, yes. uh, just an hour. Yes. <laughs> At our 6 a.m. service outside, it was jam-packed with people. Jam-packed in a healthy, safe distance way. <laughs> well, and as much jam-packed as I'm assuming 6 a.m. is. Had, we had four fire pits going. <laughs> wow. And there was over 100 people. Wow. And there's a lot of people that we haven't seen because they've been staying away. But it's an outside service, so they came. Love seeing everybody. The earlier service, um, a lot of people here. And this service doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot. So mm -hmm. what that means for us, you guys, you can let your hair down. You don't have to worry about people watching you and just worship because Steve really pulled out all the stops. Oh, my goodness. The uh, service today is woo. exciting. It's <laughs> adrenaline pumping. It is, it is a great, great, yes. we got a fun, fun service today. And we want to know that you're with us. So give us a, a like. And you can also text this Facebook number. Facebook extraordinaire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can text here to 815-240-0607. You can also text prayer to that number, and we will pray for you guys. It actually goes to our elders. They do actually pray for you, and we'd love to do that for you. Yeah. And it, especially if you're at home on the live stream, uh, uh, make sure that you're texting here to that number. It really does help us to know that you connected with us yeah. and that we can reach out if you if you need anything. We really want to yeah. uh, co to connect with you. And, and we really look at our live stream as part of our community. You guys are not just nameless faces. I mean, you can be as long as you want to be, but we don't want you to be. So let us know that you're with us. We're happy to absolutely keep that all going. Uh, I wanted to say... I can't see without my glasses. It's awful. <laughs> I want to know, what was some of your favorite Palm Sunday? Or not Palm Sunday. I'm revealing mine. <laughs> what are some of your favorite Holy Week activities that you guys did this year? Was it Maundy Thursday? Was it Good Friday? I really loved Monday Thursday, the seeing all, we had like, what, seven uh, uh, students from our rock that, and, and Boulder Student Ministries that took Did First Communion. Did a confession of faith and yeah. First Communion. It was, that was awesome. And, and these kids, I mean, they went up in front of everybody and in front of the live, or the live stream. And so what you have to realize is that when you're in the, in the up front back here and you're looking this way, there's a TV monitor and you can see yourself on this. <laughs> and they rocked it. They were phenomenal. Oh, Just my poised goodness. poised, and they did a great yeah. job. Yeah. My daughter made the bread for that service. Oh. She's I in eighth grade, and she made 16 loaves of unleavened bread. It was very good. I got two pieces because Justin picked up two pieces and went, looks like you're getting two pieces. So <laughs> That's awesome. I got double communion. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you review Palm Sunday, Palm your favorite? Sunday. I love Palm Sunday. It's just full of energy. Walking in together as a family, walking in and running into people. I love it. Yeah. This Sunday, though, Steve really is uh, excited. I'm, I'm so excited. We got, we got about 30 seconds. They've been, they're dimming the lights, so we're going to get going here. Yes. Um, oh, man. Enjoy yourselves. Happy Easter. Welcome to worship.
first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen.
Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. Guys, it is so good to see you here today. Hey, let's, uh, let's just give it up for the band one more time and leading us this morning and making it happen. Guys, thank you. Hey, go ahead and grab a seat. You know, I was having this moment. It struck me at 9, then at 10.30, watching again, going, every single guy in our band has Jesus-length hair. Uh, and then there's Steve, right? Uh, there, there's something there. I don't know, but... Thank you, guys. Barbie is shorter than everyone else, too. That is true. That is true. Thank you, guys, so much for leading us this morning, and uh, we got more to come. Those of you who don't know me, my name's David Gadini, pastor here on staff at Fellowship of Faith. We're just so grateful, whether you call this church your church home, whether you're visiting us for the first time, whether you're returning after a long time gone, whether you've been checking us out for a few months, we're just glad that you're here. We're glad that you're a part of this. You know... It's so good being back on Easter together here today. It was a year ago, early April, where the shutdown was like two or three weeks in, and on Easter Sunday there was like eight of us on stage and a couple of texts in the back, just live streaming the whole thing. And to be able to share this with you in person this morning, and for our live streamers, those of you who are just continuing to, to kind of join us from home God's good, isn't he? And it's good to celebrate this with you today. So, so excited to share with you the heart and soul of what Christianity is about. Before we jump in, though, our next gen director, Gwen Johnson, she's got a quick video here for you, uh, you kids, and, and truth be told, probably for you adults here today as well. And uh, let's take a look, and I'll be back. Happy Easter Rock Kids. I am very happy to be with you today on this really exciting, happy day for the church. Today I wanna to talk to you about what Jesus did for us on Easter. And how I want to show you what he did for us is using something you probably have at your house that maybe your mom or dad drink, and it's using a tea bag. So we're gonna use this to see what Jesus did for us. Inside this tea bag, what you were gonna find is a whole bunch of tea. Now when you look at this tea, you'll see that it's dark and it reminds me of the sin that we have in our life, um, the bad things that we do, the things that we do that hurt others, that um, hurt us, things we say, things we think. And, and when we see this sin, it almost feels like, how could we ever be done with this? How could this ever be away from us? And that's kind of what we remember as we go up to uh, Good Friday and what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because when De Jesus died on the cross, he took all of this sin, all the bad things on himself for us. But the good news is that the story doesn't end on Good Friday with Jesus dying on the cross for us because three days later, he rose again. And when Jesus rose again, it reminds us of the hope that we have, that we will rise again with him. Now with that tea bag, we saw the tea, which reminds us of our sin, but there's another part of the tea bag. And this part reminds us about how Jesus ascended up into heaven and how we will ascend with him too one day. Watch this. What an amazing gift Jesus has given us, that he died on the cross to take away all those bad things, that he rose again three days later and he ascends into heaven and we can remember that just like that tea bag floated up in the air, we are gonna be able to go up and be with Jesus as well. I hope you have a very happy Easter today. So, so this happened at 9, too, but I just got to point it out again. You guys, like, totally crack me up. I'm, I'm sitting there, we're watching Gwen's video, and then she lights that tea bag on fire. And, and I swear, like, eight people around me, as soon as it, like, went up, they went, oh, oh, like, most amazing, Christ is risen. Mm. But the tea bag goes up, you know. <laughs> guys, again, happy Easter, and, and so... 
glad that you're here. I want to talk to you today about what this day we call Easter is all about. Because here's the thing. God is at work in this world. It doesn't always seem like it. It doesn't always look like it. You can't always perceive it. Probably a lot of times you even wonder, is he working at all? But God's promise is that he's working. God is working to this day. God is at work in this world, often behind the scenes in the most imperceptible ways. But sometimes when God does something, he does something so unexpected and new that when you come face to face with it, you just can't compute. It might have been something that you were even told, something that you were taught, something that you think you understand, but then when it actually happens, it's like you're coming face to face with something for the very first time. And it is so outside the realm of expectation that you don't even know how to handle it. And sometimes when God does something new like that, it changes everything. That's what that first Easter Sunday was all about. When those women gathered those spices and went to the tomb, they did not expect a risen Messiah. They were going to anoint the dead body of a loved one, of a friend. Because make no mistake, Jesus was dead. I mean, they they saw it. They were there. They experienced it with their own eyes. They saw the horrible brutality that was thrust upon him that no human being could ever survive. They were there when he cried out with his last breath and breathed his last and body went limp. They were there when that Roman soldier shoved a spear up in Jesus' side just to make doubly sure he was dead. And they were there to take him down off that cross. It wasn't some medical team that came in or the coroner that took care of it. No, they took him down, pulled out the nails, carried his lifeless body, bloodied by it upon them, limp in their arms, no hearse, no coffin. They laid it in the tomb. And watch that stone close shut. They experienced his death more firsthand than many of us ever will. And when those women went to that tomb on Easter Sunday, they did not go expecting what Easter is about. No, they were going to see a dead man and to pay their final respects because make no mistake, they saw it, they knew it. Jesus was dead. And when those disciples were huddled in that room, it wasn't because they thought that the cross was some kind of victory. No, sometimes you come face to face with something that is so outside the realm of expectation, so different, so new, that when you experience it, you just don't know how to process what's before you. And it didn't matter that Jesus told them again and again and again that this was going to happen. Over and over, he told his disciples, now you realize, I have to go to Jerusalem. We're going there, and I'm going to be handed over. And I'm going to suffer. 
and I'm going to die. And three days later, I'm going to rise again. Oh, okay, Jesus. And they nod their heads. Because the words make sense. But until you actually see it, until you're actually there, well, sometimes no matter how many times you're told, until you're face to face with it, it just doesn't compute. But when you are finally there in its midst, it changes everything. And what changed everything that Easter morning was that instead of a dead man, there was an empty tomb and Jesus risen from the dead. Who would have ever seen it coming? Now here at FOF, we believe that God has good news that changes everything. And why, honestly, that good news sounds like bad news on the lips of so many people who claim to be Christian is beyond me. But God gives good news. And the Bible gives good news. And the good news is this, that Jesus has risen from the dead. Christ is risen. All right, all right. The tea bag goes up. Yeah! Christ is risen. <laughs> all right. We need to practice. All right. So, who is here for Palm Sunday? All right. The rest of you, you're going to catch up. Do you remember this? Ana Yahweh Hoshiana, Ana Yahweh Hatzlichana, right? When you say Christ is risen, you answer he is risen indeed. You got it? You got it? Now you need to make sure you say it loud enough that they can't hear anymore and don't know when to start. But you've got to make sure that as loud as they go, you, you put them in their grave. All right? You put them in their grave. And we're going to see how this goes. Now, now one technique. Some of you are into this alleluia thing. Alleluia. No, 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 no. Alleluia in this. All right? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You, you do your alleluias on your own time. All right? Do we think we have it? And what I want you to do is I want you to say it like it means something. Not like we're showing up at church on Sunday and doing what we're supposed to do because it's Easter Sunday. Not like this is the prescribed ritual by which the church has operated for the last 800 years. No, this is a war cry. This is the cry of people in hopeless situations, knowing that there is a God who reaches down and saves. This is the chant and the proclamation that no matter what comes this world's way, Christ is bigger than it, bigger than death itself, and that changes everything. Let it get in your bones. Let it seep deep in and, and own it. Steve, do you think they need to stand up? Yeah. They, oh, okay. Now, 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 now we, we, no, whack-a-mole style, whack-a-mole style, when you're doing your chant, this is just getting worse and worse, isn't it? <laughs> when you're doing your chants, you're up on your feet, and you're not telling me, you're telling them. All right? You shouted, you shouted over them like you were shouting the presence of God upon them. And then you, when they finish, boom, return. We're going to try it three times. All right? Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia's are on your own time. <laughs> it needs to swell. All right? So number two needs to be bigger than number one. Number three needs to be bigger than number two. And like a good teacher, if not, we'll just have to practice again. All right? Stage left. You think you got it? That left? Yeah. <laughs> Stage right. You think you got it? Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you know what the amazing thing about Christ is? Even if you're not ready, he's working anyway. One, two, three. Hallelujah! 
all right. <laughs> I think I heard a rebel over here, though, kind of sneaking hallelujahs on the way. And you know what that is? It's fun to say on Easter Sunday, right? It's fun to get into. But do you know where the power of that phrase lies? When your doctor tells you you have cancer. When you're standing at the coffin of your loved one. When the world is spinning apart around you. And because of the power of God, you can say with confidence, defiance, and hope into the middle of it, Christ is risen. Alleluia. <laughs> it's in that moment that what God did in history by raising his son, Jesus, from the dead comes to mean everything. And it's when you come face to face with the risen Christ that nothing, nothing will ever be the same again. The good news of God is that Jesus is risen from the dead. The dawn of a new age, the firstborn of a resurrection to come, the new creation at hand, and the unfolding of all that God has sought to do for this world that is spiraling down, filled with corruption and hurt. It is the beginning of God's revolution of restoring and renewing, of making all things new. This world that he loves and the people in it, and that includes you. To reduce the gospel, the good news, to anything less than the resurrection is to make it something it is not. Worse, it's to make this a sham, a joke. At best, the most colossal waste of time, and at worst, the biggest deception. Paul himself, who came face to face with the risen Christ, this man who hated Jesus and everything he stood for, but then came face to face with the risen Christ and was never the same again. He himself writes, if Christ is not raised from the dead, our faith is futile. And we of all people are most to be pitied. Worse, we are proven to be liars and make God out to be a liar who promised this. But Christ is raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For just as death came through a man, so the resurrection also comes through a man. And as in Adam all die, so in Christ, you can be made alive. And that is what Easter is about. That's what this church is about. That is what Christianity is about. Because let me tell you, contrary to what you may have been told or have come to believe, Christianity is not a set of ideas. It's not a philosophy or a worldview. It's not an ethic or a standard to live by. It isn't a moral code. It isn't some kind of emotional support. It isn't a political agenda. It isn't self-help therapy. No, it gives energy to those kinds of things. It gives direction to those kinds of things. It brings correction to those kinds of things. But at its core, Christianity is something so much more. Christianity is about an event. An event that changed human history and by which human history will never be the same again. And that those who believe it will thank God never be the same either that Jesus Christ, three days later, rose from the dead, and that changed everything 
And just so this is completely clear, just so there's no confusion on this, just so there's no sense of like we're talking past each other here, when I say he has risen from the dead, what I am not saying is that he died and his spirit went to heaven. I'm not saying that his body stayed in the ground and his, and his spirit went to be with the Lord. I'm not saying that Jesus' body was there, but his, like, he's come to live in our hearts. No, I'm saying that he came back. And I don't mean get the paddles, clear, boom. No, something more than that. Stronger than death. More alive than life. Transformed powerful and renewed. Christianity is about Easter and Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus is about God ushering in his new creation and his new age because God yearns to, redo- to, to, to restore and redeem every aspect of of who you are, no matter how broken you might be. And God yearns to redeem and restore every aspect of this world, no matter how broken it might be. God is in the renewal line of work. And Isaiah, the prophet, spoke of this new creation all over the place. Let me read a few of these passages to you this morning. Look at what he says. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, God says. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? He writes, from now on I will tell you of new things, of hidden things unknown to you. He writes, behold, I will create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but only a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat straw like an ox. They will neither harm nor destroy. On all my holy mountains, says Yahweh, yes, I am making everything new. And I love what the Apostle Paul has to say. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone, no matter who you are, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. The work of God is to offer you something new. A life that is new and renewed. But maybe you're here today And maybe you even believe this. You've heard it. You've been taught it. And you even feel like you understand it. But you don't feel new. It's Easter and you're supposed to be happy. But the reality is, you feel anything but That new is the furthest word in the lexicon from describing you old, worn, broken. Seem to better fit. You're here. And the world is opening back up. And it's filled with excitement and anticipation 
And dare I say even joy, but the reality is your mom is still dead. Your grandpa is still dead. The economy is coming back to life, they say. And there are signs on the horizon, but the reality is you're still out of work. And the house, if it's not already, is going to be gone. And you just don't see a way around it. That it's Easter. And you're still depressed. She's still leaving you. You're still sick. Or even just still struggling. Struggling with all the uncertainties of life in this world and the anxieties and fear it brings as people have struggled with since the beginning. And you find that as good as these things are, all the pastels and all the Easter eggs and all the ham in the world just aren't an anecdote for a broken, wounded soul. And the only hope that I found in this is not by looking in here for the answers. By looking in here to get this right, to get this better, to get this improved. No, the more I find that I look in here, the deeper and the darker the abyss happens to get. No, the only hope that I have found in the midst of this is not in here, but it's out there. And it's not just in a something, but in a someone. That Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that that, that changes everything. That no matter what you feel right now, no matter what you're facing right now, guess what? Jesus rose anyway. And all of your struggles, no matter how big they might be, it don't change that one bit. That he rose anyway. It's done. It's finished. It's accomplished. God is doing his work and nothing will stop that. And no matter what you feel or what you face, there is hope, life, and renewal in him. For 2,000 years, people have been coming face to face with the work of God in his son, Jesus. And by the power of the resurrection, crying out, Christ is risen! He is risen because that, that, and that alone changes everything. And I want you to hear this, each and every one of you. Those of you who love God deeply, those of you who don't. Those of you who are committed to God, those of you who are not. Those of you who delight in God and those of you who are angry with him, done with him, apathetic towards him, or even denying him. He invites each and every one of you to be born again, to be born anew, to come face to face like those women did at the tomb, face to face like those disciples did, and face to face like so many people have since with Jesus the resurrected one and in it to find God's hope 
find God's hope of new. I invite the band to come on stage. There's a song they're going to lead us in. It captures it. Hey, make it, uh, make it your cry of faith, your cry of hope, your prayer to God, Lord, <laughs> make me new. God bless. Let's go, FOF. in the words of what the scriptures say. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, somehow becoming like him in death and so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead, Christ is risen. For Christ indeed has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For just as death came through a man, so the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all are dead, so in Christ all will be made alive. Christ is risen. Is risen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, he asked. 
Do you believe this? Christ is risen. Thanks be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade. Christ is risen. risen Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Christ is risen. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Now, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God. He gives us victory, victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
thank you so much for coming out today, celebrating Easter here at Fellowship of Faith. May the power, the goodness, the spirit, the resurrection of Christ, may it, may it shape you and transform you. May it move you and mold you. May you find renewal, hope, and every good thing in him. Come on out again next week. We'd love to see you again. We go back to one service time at 10 a.m. We're going to be looking at six Hebrew words that talk about the way that God is making all things new. We hope to see you then. God bless. And we got one more for you here today. From the grave I've been raised When I needed a savior to save me Jesus, you made your way I was blind but these eyes have been open. Now I walk in the light Every step on this road I will follow Jesus, you made your way You are the way
Hey guys, did you get your cardio in? I love this set. I certainly Ooh. got an exercise workout. I'm sweating. Oh. And what you guys might not know is that the camera back here stays on during the service. They just don't project <laughs> it. Yeah. And so there's times like that I'm like, oh, you guys get a nice view of my armpit. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully Matt doesn't ever. Yeah, I have to make sure not to fat finger it and then <laughs> hit the wrong button. I I have a couple times like, oh no, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> not that one. I love about the Easter story that when Jesus rose from the dead, there was nobody around. It was kind of like he did it in secret. Yeah, it it, it's, it feels like that should be something that Jesus want to be like. Everybody and should everybody see Everybody this. should see this. You know, it would be like, Jesus would be like, you guys were mocking me on the cross. Now look what, and it, he doesn't do that. Mm -mm. He doesn't do that. You guys, human witness is not important for God's work in your life. God yeah. came to save humanity. He came to save the world. And he doesn't need us to be a part of it. He saves us anyway. This last song, Lost and Dead, But Your Love Came to Find Me. Oh, yeah. I, my dead, adrenaline dead is people, still pumping. <laughs> dead people don't find God. Yeah. Only God finds dead people. <laughs> guys, great, great service. Um, I want you guys to like and subscribe because that way we get more views. Uh, 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 there could be a long spiel I could give about algorithms here, but essentially it increases our reach so more people can see what's we going on at FOF. We something like 1,500 watches a week. Yeah, yeah. If and you... now I have to tell you that the Palm Sunday, that was like 6 or 8 or 12 were mine because <laughs> the music is phenomenal and I just wanted to keep on watching it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a great way to connect with people, not just mm -hmm. in our immediate area, but all around country, world. We know we have people that yes. are throughout the United States and world that yes. that watch what's going on. So it's it, and that's all thanks to you all liking, yes. subscribing, sharing things and out. And we also want to know that you're here. So if you have not already, text in that you're here. You got the number eight one five two four zero zero six zero seven. We also want to pray for you. You can text prayer to that same number. I want to let you know that first wave is coming along. Oh my goodness, it We're looks fantastic. Done. It's almost done. The, okay, and when I say almost done, realize that I don't have to do any of the work. I don't <laughs> have to do any decisions. So they have to I just show up. <laughs> they come in, they do they got to do a deep clean and then we got to get like furniture mm -hmm. and but the, the structure is there. Like, it and, looks and, and if you're incredible. in the building, if you're stopping by, um, it's free. you can walk around. Yeah. You, you are welcome yeah. to explore. It's really exciting. Um, it's, so we're yeah. hoping that Rock can open up soon. We're and hoping. if it does, kids, we will let you know um, whether, I'm not sure how Gwen's going to do that, but if you parents are subscribed to our e-news, it'll come through that way. If you're not subscribed to e-news, you can do that on our website, fellowshipoffaith.org. Yes, absolutely. And that's where a great place for any information, news about The Rock, news about our Boulder Student Ministries, news about upcoming services, yep. and I know FOF Plus, all of our uh, uh, additional any, content. Any of our online content. Exactly. Is FOF look at us. Plus. And look at us go. <laughs> um, so that's a great way, fellowshipoffaith.org. Uh, is a great mm -hmm. place to go to if you have any questions about Fellowship of yeah. Faith. If you guys want to give, there's seven ways that you can give. That's easy access online also. Yes, Matthew. through that number up on the bottom All of your right. screen there as well. Um, the texting is super simple, as well as if you go to fellowshipoffaith.com um, or .org slash giving, yep. find our giving page. You can find all the ways that we have to give yep. there. I think that's it for today. I think so. You guys, enjoy time with your family. Enjoy yummy food. Enjoy God's incredible blessing on your life. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we'll say hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. You guys have a great one.